In this tutorial, we are going to build an input sheet that allows us to input EV data into a data log here. As you can see, the data log contains a date, the inputter's email address, and then EV ID, kilometers, and charge used. So if, for example, if I select a EV, so let's use two for example, and then put in distance in kilometers, say 197, and then we put in our charge used, which is going to be a percentage. So we'll use 0 0.2089 and hit tab. And now we hit submit. You can see we've got a success toast pop up here. And let's go over to our data log and you can see our data has been added over here. Now this also applies to other accounts. So if I head over to Mrs. Yagi-san today and she puts in her EV log, so in her case, she's going to use EV1 and her distances were 449 kilometers and she used 0 0.589 charge. So we'll hit tab to get out of that and hit submit. Again, success. You can go over to her data log and see that it's been updated below mine. We'll head back to my account and you can see that the sheet has also been updated as well. So before we get stuck into it, in the description below, there is a link to the starter sheet for you to get started and follow along. And I encourage you to do because it really helps with your learning experience. So this should be your starter sheet here. Right now, we've just got an input range here where the user puts things in, puts in the data, and they would have to move it programmatically with Google Apps Scripts over to this data log. It's not a particularly appealing form of data input. And a lot of people like to use the standard form method where there's one item added underneath the other. So let's go ahead and update this. And I'm just going to hit Control A to select all. And I want to change the font to Roboto. Let's just uh, copy this and paste this down here for now with Control Shift V to get rid of our formatting. And we'll just delete this range here. And we'll add in our title, which is going to be input sheet. And let's just change the font to that, to something a little bigger, to 14. So let's just give it a bit of space and go down to this row five here. And let's head across to B and we'll call this one input data here as an instruction. And then for row C, let's call this hints. And row D, is going to be our example data. So let's just select that uh, row for now and we'll hit Control B to bold it and let's make it a little bit bigger. Size 11, that looks fantastic. And let's just space things out a bit more here too, I think. That looks a bit better. And maybe give our input data here and a hint a bit more width. Maybe a hint a bit more than that because we'll be writing some information in there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add in these header items. We won't be adding in this date here, which has been converted into a number, and we won't be adding this the editor email either because we'll be creating this programmatically in our Google Apps Script. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's grab this EV ID and this distance and use charge. We can cheat here and go equals transpose. And let's grab from uh, C14 all the way down to E15 and close the brackets. And this is fine here. We want this moved over to our example though because we want to keep this input data cell empty. Let's just select this range now that we've transposed it from A6 to B8. Control C, Control Shift V. And now we can see there's no formula in there. Let's just grab this one. We'll go Control X to cut it and Control V to paste over in our example data. We'll sort out the formatting in a moment. We don't need this anymore, so let's just uh, select uh, C14 to E15 and delete that. This is looking pretty good. Let's add in a colon and a space, just so it identifies that this is an input title to people. Let's just select uh, row 6 through to 8 by holding Shift down, right-clicking, and resize row. And let's change this to mm, 70. Let's see how that looks. Yep, 70 looks pretty good. So to better identify where 
uh, the cells that the user needs to add in their values, we're going to select from B6 down to B8, and then we're going to change the background color and put a border around it. And we'll just make it all borders in black. And then we'll put in a background color by going over to the fill color here. And let's make this, uh, let's see, light gray, light gray two would probably handle that pretty well. So this looks like a fairly standard input range here for users to see. Okay, we can do the same over in this example data. So let's just change this and just hold shift down from D6 down to D8. Let's go create a border, give it a background color. Probably a good example color might be this light green here. So let's just use that for now. That looks pretty good. And now in the middle, we'll just add our hints. So hints will put, uh, our first hint is we want to use a drop down menu here. I might just widen that a bit more. That looks better. We're going to use a drop down menu to hit select from our EV fleet list, but we'll do that in a moment. But we'll give it a hint and we'll say select from the fleet list. Cool. So our next hint is our distance in kilometers. We want to give a bit of advice on what sort of data we want to put into this cell, and it's going to be numerical data in uh, kilometers, so no partial values. We've already got our example over here, so it's going to be helpful too. So let's just type in add a numerical value in kilometers. Sorry, my American friends, we run in kilometers here, so please translate where needed. And we don't want a partial value, so like in meters, so 2.4 kilometers is not something we would require. So we'll say no, partial values. Good, right? There's a bit of overlap there. We'll handle that in a moment. The next one, we want to add a percentage of the charge used. So when you add percentages in Google Sheets, they are a decimal value. So uh, for example, 10% would be 0.1 of a whole number, 20%, 0.2 of a whole number, etc. So let's add in a note there to explain that. So add percentage charge used as a decimal value. Awesome. Okay, let's do a little bit of formatting to that right now. So uh, this hints here, first we want to wrap them so they're all contained inside these cells. So we can go up here and click this little wrap button. And let's italicize them just because they're hints, it's kind of a, a guide instead of uh, complete instructions. Let's go over here and make these bold as titles. And let's just up the size here to 11. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And we might do the same for this range here. So I'm going to hold shift down and then I'm going to hold control and select D, 6, 7 and 8 to get all this selection. And let's just up the size here to 11 as well. So now we want to move these over to the right. So they're butting against the input cell. Hold shift down, select A6 down to A8 and just uh, move this over to the right here. And let's just center our input range. So when our data comes in, it stays centered. So we'll go uh, B6 to B8. And we'll do the same to our example. I think we've got all that under control. Let's add some instructions to the top for first time users. First thing I think we'll do is we'll just merge across this cell. So I'm gonna hold shift down from A2 to E2 and merge. And I'm gonna italicize this with control I. And then what I might do is just hit this paint format and select the row below, and that'll format it the same way. And in our top set of instructions, we are going to write fill out the details below in range. And let's hit control B to bold this bit, it's important. Uh, B5 colon B8, and then control B to get out of that bolding and then click the submit button. Awesome. Let's hit enter to get to the next one. And now we need to explain what happens when we run our script the first time. So in a moment, we're going to put a button down here and that will run the script that will select all this data and put it in our change log. 
And the first time you run scripts on a Google Sheet or any other Google Workspace document, it's going to ask you for authorization to do it as a protection for you. So what we'll do here is type in if you are submitting a log for the first time, comma, we'll need to authorize the script by clicking the button below and completing authorization and then clicking the button a second time to submit the data. That explains pretty much everything. Hopefully I haven't made a spelling mistake there. But let's add a bit more value to this and add a link to a guide just in case you're a bit more concerned or need further instructions. So learn more here. Let's just wrap that for now. I have a tutorial on running script for the first time in Google Workspace. So there's a link over here and I'll select this. And you can see that in this tutorial here, there's a video and further instructions. And let's just add that in. So I'm going to just select this learn more here, hit control K, and hit control V and hit apply. And now the user can click on that link. Now you can find this link if you're playing along in the description below. Cool, so our next step is to add in some data validation here. We don't want people putting in random bits of text into these cells and then have them spit out here. Let's go to B1 and this is our EV ID. If we look back at our data log, we can see we've got a list of electronic vehicles here. Right now in our fleet, we have four EVs and the IDs start from EV001 through to EV004. So we're going to create a drop down list of these. And to do this, we're going to open up a new sheet tab and we're going to name it fleet. And let's just select all again. And we'll make this uh, Roboto again. And we'll type in fleet again. And we'll make that bold. Control B. Make that size uh, 14 as our title. And then here we'll type Control B and we'll type in ID. And our fleet is uh, EV001. Let's see if this uh, helps us out. Perfect. Thank you, Google. So we've got 001, 2, 3, and 4. Awesome. So to capture this, we could just reference the ranges in our data validation. But what we'll do this time is just, uh, just in case we get some more fleet vehicles, we're going to select all the way down to here. And then we're going to go up to data and select our named ranges. And we're going to call this named range fleet. Nice. So we're going to reference this name range in a moment in our data validation. Let's head back over to our input sheet. And we're going to right click and go down to here, data validation, and let's list from a range and enter our range. So we don't have to go back. We know what it is. It's fleet as a name range here. And we want to reject any input that isn't part of the fleet. And yeah, sure, we want to show validation help and hit save. Now we should be able to select any one of these. And if we try and type in something else, we'll get an error. Okay, our next data validation item is kilometers. And we know our EVs um, have a max range of 950Ks. So we want to keep that range between 0 and 950. So let's right click and data validation. And let's go to numbers this time. And yep, we want between, and we're going to hit between 0 and 950. We want to reject the input. And yes, enter a number between 0 and 950. Sounds great. Cool. So now if we typed in 10, it'll accept it. If we typed in minus 1, it'll give us an error. If we typed in 1000, we'll also get an error. Next, we want to put in our charge use, and that's going to be as a decimal value between 0 and 1. So let's just right click. We repeat the process again. So data validation, number between. Zero, one, project input, show help. Let's make this slightly more explanatory and we'll say where one is 100%. And that will help explain things a bit better, I hope. We'll hit save. And now if we type in two, we'll get an error. Ah, if we type in 0 
uh, 20 percent it's fine so in our code we'll have to grab this range of data and probably the easiest way to grab this range is with another named range so let's just go over to this named range which is still up here at the moment if yours is closed you can just go back to data and click on name range here so let's go let's click off that and select add range and it's got b6 to b8 yes b6 through to b8 and we're just going to call this one input data and select done okay so now when we come to grabbing this data with our google app scripts we're going to reference this in a moment the last thing we need to do now is add in our submit button and our submit button will just add to the bottom here so to do this we're going to go and add a drawing so insert down to drawing and there's a little button drawing here uh, in shapes and shapes again and you can see this little button here and we're going to just uh, make that come out here now i don't like these black lines in there so i'm going to get rid of those so border color make that transparent that should be fine for now let's just double click on this shape to add some text and we'll call this submit and that text is a little bit small and let's also change the color of that so we can expand to our more options here and let's just make this the blue to coincide oh i need to select this first now let's just uh, make this blue keep it matching we'll make it bold uh, let's change the font to our roboto font and let's start making this a little bit bigger that looks pretty good there cool all right let's click on this image again and just bring it in a bit so it all fits a little bit more snugly yeah that's good so we've got our submit button we're going to hit save and close and there it is there no oh, it still looks a bit large and it's a bit off so let's just uh bring that to there move it up into the corner here and i think that looks pretty tidy yeah let's uh, go over to open and get rid of these background lines because they look a bit messy so we'll go to open hit show and get rid of those lines that looks nice and tidy now and now we need to connect our submit button to the function we're going to use that will grab this data and add it in here so head over to extensions and click app scripts and if you're working with the sample sheet you should have something like this appear now our function we're going to use uh, to run from our submit button is called the append ev log so i'm going to select that at the moment hit Control c to copy go back to our google sheets and just right click on our submit button and click these vertical ellipses and assign a script which is going to be here and hit Control v to paste and click on ok so now when this button is clicked it will run this script in the next part of this tutorial we are going to get stuck into the code we're going to select the data from our input sheet and then check if the user has added a value into each one of the cells required then we're going to add the date and the user's email using google apps scripts so they don't have to do it if you enjoyed this tutorial please click the like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell to find out when the next tutorial is out until next time